Okay, so now on the top, I don't know if you see it or if anybody sees it on the top left. It, it, does anybody else see it says yeah. recording? See it, it says recording. Okay. okay, awesome. All right, so I am going to, let's see if I can figure out how to mute everybody. We could do it ourselves too. Okay, great, if everybody could do themselves. that. And, and, if you, and if you put your phone on do not disturb, then that'll also help you because this is all about you right now, right? This is my, I've got some technical challenges. Let's see if I can do that myself. I'm gonna put it on do not disturb and come back. There we go. All right, good. So nice to see you. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's uh, dive in. I'm, I'm looking at you, Dana, so I don't know how. This is going to be weird. D does everybody else see you? I see Amira. I see Amira. <laughs> Do you only see Amira? <laughs> oh, I see Amira. My angels? I see, I see Amira and then everybody else in small images up at the top. Oh, you do? Oh, you mean they're, they're icons. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're live. Okay, great. Let's see what else. Yeah, I see like five people live. And, but Amira, you're small the way the others are. Yeah, I think some people are on their phones. Some people um, are on, 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 yeah, just phone. No, I'm on my computer. I'm sorry? I'm on my computer. Okay, yeah, so it's different. Yeah, so I'm going to ask you all to mute yourselves and, and we can close our eyes and not look at this. Um, I just hope I wanted to have the video. I mean, I'm okay if it doesn't record. I'm okay to have the video um, so we can share it and other people or we can re-listen to it. Um, that was my intention. And uh, so let's see what happens. Um, I wasn't, I didn't want to do Facebook Live or YouTube Live because I've got a slow bandwidth and I didn't know how that was going to transmit live. So here we are. We got what we got, right? All right. So wherever we find ourselves and now Karen, I see you full screen. Is it because you were, let's see. It may be because I was talking. Okay. It's recording. Fantastic. Meeting settings. Let's see. There we go, I'm gonna mute you on entry. All right, all right, so sorry about this. All right, wherever we are, woof, around the world, good morning, good evening. Ah, breathe, let's breathe, let's, I like to say in my class and with my students, I'm gonna zip us along and I'm gonna, whatever shows up here, I'm gonna, you know, guide you. We use these exploding um, fireworks as a, as a tool. So just imagine fireworks exploding all around us for all the chaos that we've enduring, whether it's our technology or sheltering in place and the news and random, it's just all a shock. So just let's just have the fireworks around us that we can celebrate that we're here and we have a beautiful day or a beautiful evening and you've got a comfortable place to find yourself and sit comfortable. <clears throat> and with your palms open, ready to receive with every breath, taking a deep breath in, just letting go, letting go of some tension and some unconscious energies, the, the panic and the fear and the doubt questions. We've all got questions, don't we? Take another deep breath in and just relax a little more. No matter how good you think you're doing this or feeling this, it really doesn't matter, okay? It's working. It trusts the process. Oh. So we're going to imagine ourselves on a path. It's a smooth path. And we're walking on the path and we're walking towards the edge of a forest. 
as I say that, the sun outside is brightening up. We had some torrential rain earlier. And the sun is starting to beam down on your face. Just notice that you can sense and feel that warmth of the sun and the fresh air and a gentle breeze brushing your skin. Getting closer, closer to the edge of the forest, you realize that you can see very clearly. And you realize as you get closer and closer to the edge of the forest, the trees are giant trees, massive, giant sequoias or redwood trees. And they're the largest on the planet. They're like a great cathedral in the forest. Thousands and thousands of years old. And you become aware and you're in awe of the majesty and the power of these sequoias. Tree trunks are strong and large. And you're drawn to one particular tree. And surprisingly, there's a door at the base of that tree. As you approach the door, you open and step inside, where immediately you merge with the tree. It's as if you and the tree are one. And you can feel the roots of the tree extending down the base of your spine. You sense your very shallow root system. The roots are intertwined and interconnected with all the other trees in the forest. These roots make you feel safe. They give you support. And they give you permission to let go of anything that you're ready to release. And we just allow whatever energy, whatever tension or fear, thoughts, Begin to flow down these roots, down the roots, flowing without an effort. The natural pull and gravity of our planet just begins pulling down anything that's ready to be released. Gently extracting emotions that are stuck in your body. For whatever pain that might be in your body that you've been experiencing, let that fall away. Let it slip down the roots. Any foreign energy that you've accumulated from the news, from family and friends, any associates, just let that flow away. Let your worries begin to slip down those roots. Allow the confusion and any doubt, anger. Yeah, we all have a lot of disappointments. We've been stopped in our tracks. Let all that flow away. Let go of the turmoil and the resistances to the changes. Let go of your losses. Let go of frustration and abuse. Any painful memories that you've been hanging on to or grudges 
that just don't matter right now. Let go of shock. And let go of your need to control. Let go of your obsession with toilet paper. <laughs> or with, you know, having your favorite foods. Let go of your need to obsess about not being clean enough. God knows all those pictures are lighting up. Let go of aggression with yours or others. Let go of that competition and jealousy that you don't have what someone else has or someone else has something or wants something that you have. Let go of all the rage. I think we're going through every range, all the, the full range of emotions. Let go of that energy we call procrastination, that you just don't want to do something that you know is nagging you for a long time. And let go of that energy we call sabotage. We trip ourselves up. <sighs> let go of resentment. And just notice any sensations in your body as you've been letting go of these emotions with no effort. You might get memories or a concept that lights up in your mind. Just let it go. Let go of grief. Let go of the energy of this challenging situation we're immersed in. and disturbing memories or pictures or stories you've heard. Start letting go of imbalance. Just notice what you notice in your body. My body's just revved up and I've got all these tingles through my whole spine and my hips. Because you're not only letting go of your own energy, you're letting go of other people's energies. Remember, we're all connected through those root systems. Let go of scarcity and any limitations, knowing that we're divinely provided for and all your needs will be met. And just trust for right now, letting go of scarcity. Honestly, I'm overwhelmed doing this and guiding this and, you know, we're, we're doing some powerful work here, so good job. And now imagine a giant golden net below your roots and begin to slowly draw this net up through your root systems. So this net is so finely woven, it's going to start collecting up any remaining energies that you're ready to release that might be stuck in the roots. So we're going to start at the roots and we're going to drag, slowly drag this net all the way up through the root system, moving all the way up through the body. Slowly begin moving this net through your feet and notice any sensations as you move the net up through the ankles and the calves, through your knees and your thighs. Allow the energy to move up through the hips and your pelvis passing through your reproductive organs, your stomach, moving up through the heart, precious heart, the center of your purpose and your passion, moving in through those lungs that 
we take so for granted. Just collecting up any foreign energies that have been stuck in these organs. Allow this golden net to extract energy from any of your systems, the digestive or the lymphatic circulation system, respiratory. Notice the energy being released from your hands and your arms, your shoulders, your neck, moving up into the head, your skull, your brain. Completely collecting any remaining energy in this golden net above your head. And just raise it up about a foot above your head. And imagine tying the four corners of this net and tossing that net up into a black hole where it's completely absorbed and released. And now imagine yourself immersed inside an infinite ocean of love and light. It's shimmering, sparkling. Immersed within this divine energy, with no beginning and no end. And if this infinite ocean was a color, it would be the most brilliant golden light that you've ever seen. Notice how that feels in your body. This vibration of love is beyond anything that we can comprehend. And sitting in this vibration, take some long, deep cleansing breaths. Allowing your physical body to absorb this light and this vibration. Allow your cells and all the organs and the systems of the body to absorb this brilliance, this inspiration, this God consciousness. Whatever label we give it, just know it's light, it's energy. And imagine that this golden light, this powerful, brilliant, shimmering light expands completely surrounding you in every direction. Just feel it, imagine it. And imagine the leaves on your powerful grounded sequoia, the tree that you're imagining connection with is all shimmering. The leaves are golden light that are sparkling, like a radiant dew that's just scintillating and sparkling. And this golden light is flowing into the branches. As this golden light is healing every part of you. wants you to know it and to experience it. This is your own true love, your very beingness. This infinite love and light all around you. We've all been so busy and distracted and convinced we were on our right paths, but we often forget. Most of us have forgotten on our path in this embodiment, who and what we are, and we're here to remember that. We're here to understand this at a deeper cellular level and to transmit that 
healing ourselves and others around us. So imagine this presence, this light filling in your brain. From the left brain to the right brain. And just notice the vibration. Sometimes it takes a big old cosmic whack to get us quiet enough and to be consistent enough and to commit to truly knowing ourselves. And allow this presence to completely fill in your forehead, your eyes and your ears and your nose, your mouth. And feel it in your cheeks and your teeth and your jaw. Feel it. And vibrate. Allow yourself to feel and experience this precious light moving down into the neck and the shoulders. Allow this energy to fill your lungs and vibrate and transmute any cells that have been compromised. Feel it and receive it. Allow this shimmering presence of light move into your heart and vibrate, activating it, stimulating it. Feel that sensation. Allow yourself to receive it completely. And allow this presence to come down into your stomach to heal your ability to digest your nutrients and to absorb it, to receive it and balance your system, to give you the highest well-being fulfillment give your body's have your body's needs met vibrate at that vibration and feel it let your digestion completely be absorbed with this brilliant shimmering golden light and imagine this shimmering golden light completely embrace and fulfill your reproductive organs whether you have them or you don't just allow them to reset and allow the presence to flow down into your pelvis and your hips healing Strengthening, vibrate, feel it, allow it. And this presence moves down your roots into the earth below your feet. Vibrate and feel that, receive it. And imagine this infinite sea of golden shimmering light and love surround your body. This infinite ocean of love wants to love you. It wants to heal you. It wants to know you and experience you. your own true love, your magnetic beingness. This infinite love and light all around you. And gently and slowly, we'll all at a newer and deeper, higher level, 
integrate this love and light into our beingness and embodying this into our being and expressing it in the world. Some of you are just buzzing, huh? <laughs> yeah, so when you're feeling complete, you can open your eyes. Give yourself a pat in the back for being here and sharing with us and being in this incredible space. Oh my, I wish I could figure this out properly. Um, let's see if we've got a chat now. I, I, I will stay around for some questions. Um, I think D Dana is going to be our host and unmute people. I think you can raise your hand. Uh, let's see. I'm going to unmute you. And, and oh, we've got some four legged friends that are here I don't if you could mute yourself I think that might be helpful hello Nicole and I know some of you weren't able to get in because um, perhaps the technology perhaps me not looking at the um, admit and I don't know why I had to admit everybody uh, here but I am here it's okay um, but I do believe we've got a recording so we, I will definitely share that with you. So check on my Facebook page and my YouTube page. I'll do what I can and post it where I can. Um, do you want to stop the recording, Amira? Um, we can leave it on. I can edit it. But I'd like to, you know, if anybody's like to ask me a question or discuss anything right now or have any urgent um, needs, I know we're all in, in, in a complete... Um, disbelief every morning for the last week as I'm sure you have I've been waking up thinking this has got to be dream. this is this isn't really happening and so I've been going through you know my own range of emotions and so although it's good to talk about it and we as ladies we, we like to talk and, and keep talking about it but honestly that doesn't really help us um, it does to a point, but what we're doing when we try to talk about it is we're trying to release the energy, but we're actually dumping that energy on someone else. So what I would encourage everybody here that understands this concept is to not keep talking about what's not working or the scary stuff, but what can we do about it? What can we, how can we transmute or what can we do differently? Our world is radically changing. Um, I'm working on a program that some of you may be interested in. It's called Plan B, because me included, we've got to create Plan Bs now. You know, everything is different. And I've been talking about many people leaving this planet, um, being in alignment, being intuitive, trusting that intuition, and not and being able to transmute fear for a very long time, <laughs> decades now. But this is this is it. This is this is. The curtain time, curtain call. We're in it. And uh, so now what? Plan B. We've got to create plan B. And the way we create that is with clarity, being grounded, and focus. And if, if any of you are new to meditation, this is the time. For those of you who aren't new to meditation, this is the time. Double time. <laughs> Double time. Um, it's all about clearing the energy right now. It's all about lining up and being in centered. And so when we're there, we will be inspired. We will know what's next. You as a leader will be able to step up in a new way, in ways that you never conceived of. And um, I'm very, very excited. I also feel momentous, exciting things coming for all of us um, if we can receive it. That's the key. That's the kicker here. You know, if we're not able to receive it, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be tough. 
Hi, Amara. Can you hear me? It's Nicole in New York. Hi, Minnie. Yeah, I can Hi. hear you. Hi. I wanted to thank you so much for getting us all together and doing this. What a brilliant idea. And you, I just adore you. You know that. And um, <laughs> I feel like this is our Super Bowl as light workers. This is our time. And you're absolutely right. We cannot buy into this fear that's being projected upon us. I will share something with all of you. Um, I had a touch of this uh, the other day. And uh, my entire body was shivering and I was sneezing. And I believe, and, and I'm not doing this for fear, I'm doing this for awareness, that if this was bioengineered, and I know there's a lot of speculation, so I hope I'm not stepping on any toes or saying anything, speaking out of turn here. But if it was intuitively, and I'm extremely sensitive, I feel that fear was built into this virus. Because the fear that overcame me when I was experiencing the chills for the second time was something I had never experienced before. You know me, I'm not an alarmist. I'm not a fear monger. I don't go around spreading. But mm. I, I had to consciously, cognizantly tell myself that that thought was not mine and then turn it around. Right. And ever since then, I've felt so empowered. And I'm telling everyone what your message is today. Please do not buy into this. And this is our time to step up because the world needs light workers right now. Thank you for sharing that. I, you know, I'm hesitant to go into my story. And for any of you who know me, I, I don't go, especially in public forums, and tell you what I'm experiencing. Because I feel as a healer, I'm here to help you clear the space and not buy into our stories. But I am human. And last Sunday, the energy was so intense. I uh, woke up with an incredible leg camp cramp Monday morning at 4 a.m. And if you've ever had a leg cramp, you, you know, you bounce out of bed, you run down the hall, you're trying to walk it out and massage it out. I made it to the kitchen to get some water. And this is tying into your story, Nicole, okay? Mm -hmm. In a way that I really want people to hear this it, it shocked me. Okay, so that's mm -hmm. one um, I got to the counter and I started fainting. And I got mm -hmm. myself some water, figuring I need to hydrate. So I'm listening right. to my intuition. I'm listening. What does my body need? I'm tuning into my body. I'm not in sleep, but it hurts like hell. So right. I got the water. I started to faint and started losing it. So I got my water and started to walk to the chair. And I fainted. Um, oh my God. I, I spilled the water all over myself. Um, miraculously, I had this crystal glass. I always drink out of crystal glasses. The crystal glass was poised on a ceramic tile floor in the corner next to my art supplies. I was soaking wet, but <laughs> the glass did not break, which <laughs> is amazing to me, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. I must have come to. I was in a sort of a fetal position, which is also symbolic. Right. I came to, I fell back again, and I don't know, I must have hit my head. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how long I was out. I was out. The cold floor brought me back to my consciousness, right? I made wow. it back into the chair or into the chair finally. And I sat there for a while. Then I made it back to my bed and I went to sleep, et cetera, et cetera. I slept and rested all day Monday as everybody else was in the world was in shock. I was in this bed going, what the F happened, right? Uh -huh. So there I am recovering, doing hydration, doing my intuition, what is it? Is it potassium deficiency? Is this, is it that? Checking off the boxes. I had, interestingly enough, had to go to see my doctor Wednesday. And I'm not watching too much news, but I get to the doctor's office and they have a triage tent set up outside the hot, the office. So they asked me all these questions. I said, well, a couple of weeks ago, I had a tickle and this and that, and I had diarrhea, I had nauseous, and I had a headache, which are all the symptoms. So right. yes, I started freaking out. I said, I, ha I have the symptoms. They wouldn't see me for my regular lab tests, which is why I was there. They said, mm. you've got to go to ER. So I went to ER scared out of my mind. Mm -hmm. I was um, kind of lost trying to find the hospital. I'd never been to that particular hospital before. Anyway, Google, I thought was, mis anyway, it was a long trip. I got there. 
there was another triage outside of ER. And if anybody's listening, I know that's the last place anybody wants to go mm-hmm. because the parking lot was half empty. The ambulances <laughs> were all parked and there was nobody there. I'm like, this is very surreal. This is like, mm-hmm. it, it, am I in a dream? It, it, mm-hmm. Is this all really happening? So I went to the triage. They took my questionnaire and they wouldn't, they didn't even take my temperature. They sent me to ER. Mm-hmm. I go in, long story short, guys, they did a CT scan, they checked my heart, they checked my blood, they checked the electrolytes, everything's normal. And, and the sweet doctor said to me, you could have a concussion. You've got all the symptoms of a concussion. I probably whacked my head twice. So yeah, I've had a headache on and off. Um, all, all is good, okay? And what I was doing for three hours, Nicole, was laying in ER with a mask that they gave me that was inside out. And I finally asked somebody, I said, can I, do I need this mask? Because I kept thinking, first of all, I want to ask, I asked every single expert that was there, all the testers, all the technicians, all the doctors, the nurses that I interacted with, is this an overreaction? What's going on? This seems surreal. I just don't understand this. So I was using my intuitive abilities and they, I finally said, do I need this mask? And they said, no, you don't need it in here. Anyways, you've got it on inside out. They told me. So I was like, oh my God, this is so crazy. All right. So, you know, uh, I've got my own theory and philosophy about the whole virus. Um, But for three hours, I laid there in my own process, thinking my life was over, that I had a brain tumor or I had a heart condition, and that if this was my time, then I surrendered. Yeah. And and I was alone, and it was scary, but I've been there before. And I can tell you that in my near-death experience, when my life completely changed 20 years ago... It is the most incredible, incredible place. I talk to dead people all the time that aren't dead. So for anybody that's really, really lit up about their, the people that are dropping like flies around us, and there are a lot of people that are leaving. Um, so, you know, this is an opportunity, whether it's a transformation to leave our body, and I don't mean to sound callous or insensitive here. I know those feelings, their fear. I know the sensations. I know all of that firsthand. I've been there. I'm not trying to minimize any of this. And I have to say that what's equally as powerful is that feeling I had while transmitting the energy to you and holding this meditation space today for the love and light. So we have a choice. (laughs) We have a choice to connect with that. And as hard as that is right now, to keep, keep practicing to keep doing what we can do. And and some days we're better than others. Some days it's a dream. Some days we wish we could get back to where we were three days ago. Okay, so this is, this is a moving target. Meditation and getting into that clearing and, and creating that space of healing is always different. Okay, and many of my longtime mentoring students are here with us today. And I appreciate you guys are here. You know yourself from your own practice. It's always different. Yeah, there is no cookie cutter. Sarah, can I share for a minute? Yeah. I've spent uh, a lot of time in gratitude um, and calling people and just pointing out the dolphins and Venice canals. Um, the carbon emissions are way down. This, you know, we've been waiting for a wake up call for a long time. We've been in a wake up call for a long time, but I'm finding that what has been healing for me along with meditation thank you so much for doing this today is gratitude i wake up every morning in gratitude gratitude that i have the home i have gratitude that i that i'm healthy gratitude for my friends gratitude that the planet is getting better yes you know i'm with you karen and i too have been on my walks and seen faces that i've never seen on the path before with their dogs and their kids and each other, their spouses. And I've seen birds that I've never seen. I saw this electric blue bird yesterday that was brilliant. And I'm like, what is it? You know, I've never seen that. And so, yes, we get to open our eyes to something on the planet that we've never discovered before. 
because we were too busy, you know, and stressed out and anxious. And, 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 and there's still some real things in terms of our needs and provisions that some of us might need still that are, it's changing. So, um, I have a neighbor who asked me if I could, if they could go shopping for me. I mean, it's been that kind of community experience. Yes, and we all, I'm sure, are starting to experience that in different ways. And thank you for that. It's there's so much beauty around us, and gratitude is a very powerful, high vibration of energy, and it is um, it is healing in itself. It's a moving meditation, isn't it? It's a consciousness. It's a mindset. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. This has been wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. I, I've been feeling so emotional, so many waves of it happening here for me today. And I'm over the moon grateful for all of you that are here and holding space in your own little corner of the world. Um, and, uh, you know, I think words are kind of, I feel inadequate right now in terms of how I'm expressing myself, but um, the emotion is, is pretty powerful and the healing that we created was that too. So thank you all for being here. Was there anybody else that has something important to say? Hello, Francoise, it's nice to see you, honey. Nice to see you too. <laughs> well, I, I have a fun, I mean, it's, it's quite an interesting experience because uh, I relate to what you said, Amira. I mean, it was less, you know, but uh, last Saturday I was doing my house cleaning and I have my little bottles, you know, and um, anyway, so I have this beautiful frame and Ganesh, you know, I came back from, you know, I brought back from India. And as I was, you know, cleaning the bottles, the, the frame just fell on my head. And I was just, for like one second, I was scared because it's in glass and even didn't break. And it just fell off my crown, flat on my crown. It didn't break. And I was like, wow, what's going on? <laughs> and you know, so, I mean, I laughed. I was alone at home and I laughed. And I was like, wow, talk about like a wake up call <laughs> on your crown chakra. I mean, that was pretty, you know, pretty intense. So. Yeah, we're, we're, I think, you know, if we, we're, we're obviously all slowed down. And so we're yeah. all having these amazing experiences and the smallest things are gigantic. And mm -hmm. I, I am really overwhelmed with the magic. Yeah. Um, but we've got work to do. Yep. Every single one of us. I mean, I've been on the path for 40 years. I've been doing this work consciously for 20 okay and I know some of you are like yeah 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 Mira yeah I'll do the tools tomorrow or I'm too busy I didn't have time but those quantum energy tools for those of you who have them and those of you who don't have them you need to get them I mean yeah. I, I kept saying if, if I charged the price of a Gucci purse you'd finally get the value and the power of them you know they're so simple and so so directly powerful but you know this is our survival tool I remember yeah. when I first created them 20 years after my near-death experience saying, there is going to be a time where we will not be able to function without those tools. They're grounding. They're helping clear the center of our head. They're collecting our energy. They're sending foreign people their energy or energies back. They're healing with color and light. They're amazing. But that's just not to give myself a, well, okay, I pat in the back I am, but this is, this is, this is big stuff. It's time right. to do the dance. Yeah. Well, Amira, I've known you for like 20 years. And since I've known you, I mean, you always said that. I mean, you know, I mean, it's totally true. And, and it's time, I mean, it's like, you know, with, with this confinement, I mean, obviously I, I'm in France, but it's like I teach them to my daughter because I realize it's like it's time also, you know, to... Okay, it's a like kids, they have to learn also, we have also, you know, to pass some of the tips of, of course, you know, but at least to get grounded, at least, you know, to, you know, to get protection 
and um, and that's very very important. I mean, I thank I mean I thank you in spirit every day, you know, and I thank you know to have these tools and to have my toolbox because yes, I mean I use them every day, and uh, but these circumstances are uh, you know it's um, it's quite interesting because in France. I notice how it's also accelerating and developing, you know, I do say um, solidarity, you know, when people like every night at 8 p.m. we're all outside clapping our hands and thank you to, you know, the, um, thank you to the medical, you know, people. Thank you to the cashier lady who is at her job because we can eat, the store keeps open. You know, thank you to everybody. And but honestly, it's, I think, very emotional every night at 8 p.m. to hear all the city, you know, in Marseille clasping into his hands in gratitude, you know, for others who are, you know, maybe taking risk to be here for us you know it's it's it's, it's pretty moving it's fantastic uh, you yeah. know, i want to comment on the kids you know the kids are absorbing all these energies and they're they're absorbing what we're feeling but they're they're so um vulnerable in the sense of what are we passing along to them? How are we guiding and shaping them for future? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them are teaching us, of course, too, you know, because we, we're being reminded. But the simplicity of grounding, whether it's the walk that you take, you know, the tool that we use today with the roots, you know, letting the energy flow away from us so that we can be divinely guided to the next thing, how you can help your neighbor, how you can show up as a teacher and a leader or as a parent or as a friend, you know, and to be compassionate, to, to be, a, be in a way that you never thought you could be, you know, I think this is our opportunity to show up and to shine in spite of fear. You know, I'm sure that those grocery workers are overwhelmed with the energy of panic and fear of everybody that you're I'm going to ask you to, Go ahead and mute yourself, please. Um, yeah, so, you know, looking for the miracles, looking for the signs of spirit working in our lives, being in that gratitude, as Karen mentioned. I know that everybody here is, and as I am, um, you know, cry, let it out. That's all part, part of letting it go. And um, we can't all be rocks. <laughs> um, so is there anybody else? I know this is a wonderful time. Any questions or comments or sharing? I know well, we could go on for a very long time and this feels great. Maybe we should do it again, huh? I had a, I had a question. Um, and a little while back, you said something about this is forever or decades. I mean, I, I found that kind of alarming. I wondered if you could clarify what you meant because everything well, I think about this virus, it's not forever, you know. It's, no, 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 no. I think what I've been saying is this transformation and the spirit, spiritual awakening oh, okay. I've been talking about for over two decades. And because after my near-death experience, I saw things and I continue to see things that most people don't or haven't been tuned into. But it's your turn. It's your time. It's time for us to see things we never thought possible, just like this virus. Who thought? But there's so much more multi-dimensional beings of light and the angel world and and our loved ones that are in spirit they're all around us so there's a shift going on that's radically changing our perspectives our perception of what is real now we can just focus on the virus or we can look at there's so much more how have i been looking at the world how have i been looking at myself how have i been perceiving what's real and what's not real <laughs> Okay, so that's what we're being challenged with in ways that I don't have all the answers. <laughs> I'm just saying what I've been feeling and seeing for a very long time. And wow, here we go. I mean, if this isn't a, you know, I, I don't know, it's a shock in, in every way. So, Thank yeah, you. So, <clears throat> does that make sense to you? 
Yes, thank you. That's great. Thank yeah, you. So. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. And it's nice to see you, Elena. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do so much of my work on video, uh, not on video, on over um, audio. So when I'm in a trance, you know, I it's kind of a distraction to see faces. So, but I see your energy all the time and, and we're all in, in, your face. So some of us are I see Lama in Dubai. I'm saying hello. And we got people in San Diego all the, all the way around the world. And it's so great. I have to say, you know, I'm grateful for my near death experience because if it wasn't for that and the traumas from 2008, when we went in through a world crisis, that's what caused me to sell everything I owned. And I moved halfway around the world to Dubai. And that's what took me there. And was it fear or the depression that every I was feeling with everybody here? Nobody knew what to do. I just went for it. I just, I just barreled and 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 made it up. And so, that's some of what I'm talking about in terms of Plan B. And I lived there for five years. I worked with people from all over the world, and and honored to work with members of the royal families and amazing experiences that would have never happened okay but trusting my intuition and taking the steps with confidence and knowing i had clarity and knowing my guides were there for me those were all critical in me being able to do that call it courage well there were nights that i cried myself to sleep because i thought i was losing my mind and i was nuts but there again i had no focus on or um vision to what was next i just have to take one step at a time and i think we're in that place we don't know what's tomorrow okay we're all in it but that's the power of our intuition and our centeredness having our ability to be inspired and receive that powerful grace and wisdom and uh, hopefully you had a glimmer of that today i'm delighted that you could all be here in this time in the space so let's hopefully we got a recording and that you can re-listen to it. I think what I'll do is I'll edit it and just have the, the meditation so you can just dive into it for yourself and feeling. You might want to check out my website on my store. There's other meditations. There's classes for you. Some of them are extremely affordable for you to jump right into it. Okay. So with love and many, many blessings to you, my heart's with you all. I feel you more than you will ever know. And um, I look forward to healing and working with you down the road. Big hugs to you. Thank you, Amira. Bisous. Bisous.